Hey, Pastor Steve Waldron, I hope you're having a great day in Jesus. Well, this is going to be number four in Pastor Waldron's library. Some of these I probably need to do individually as well. But Dave Norris, Big Ideas. And this is just a great apostolic book. A lot of good things in here. Dave Norris has been a great writer for a long time. Great teacher. And also his grandfather started Apostolic Bible Institute in Minneapolis. Still doing really good. But this is just a fantastic book. It's Let's see, it's uh, 340 pages, and he kind of ransacks the, uh, you know, realm of, of scholarship, and it's just really good. So, big ideas about love, uh, big ideas about the Spirit of God, big idea about Jesus' purpose, big idea about the gospel, big idea about truth, big idea about purpose. I mean, that's a, it's a fantastic uh, book and a fantastic thinking process. I've got some pages marked in here as well on Elohim as a matter of fact. So that's really good. And then we have right here Peter Sturges Rutman 22 Years of the Bible Believers Bulletin Volume 2. I've got Volume 1 as you can probably tell by the little markings I've gone through a lot of this. Peter Sturges Ruckman. He was a genius, uh, IQ of 195, and he almost single-handedly won a great measure of the independent Baptist world to the belief in the King James Version. Like, Sword of the Lord used to be against him, and just through sheer force of, of scholarship, he kind of won them over to that. The articles from these bulletins are now being reproduced in 12 volumes that will total nearly 8,000 pages. So um, I didn't always agree with a lot of things Peter Ruckman said. I agreed with a whole lot of things he said. This is a great book. Again, I've got page after page after page marked and earmarked and everything else. Uh, just incredible stuff. Okay, so third, Pastor Aldrin's Library, the fourth part, In Defense of Jesus, investigating attacks on the identity of Jesus Christ. Lee Strobel, of course, an atheist journalist who became a Christian through sheer objective investigation. And so this is just a fantastic book. Follow up on the best selling book, The Case for Christ, Case for Faith, Case for Creation. Great stuff. Okay, one volume commentary on God's promises by Joel Drinkard, uh, by Thomas Nelson. I thought that was an excellent idea to because I didn't know, you know, I lock ears by, uh, excuse me, book on all the promises in the Bible, but to do a book on all the promises of the Bible commentary, I thought, well, that's just amazing. Let's take a look. But in here, Thomas Nelson, of course, continues to publish really good stuff. So another one in this. The reason we're doing the Pastor Aldrin's Library, even though I need to do a lot of these individually, is I don't have time to do them individually. And this is the only way we're going to get anywhere close. So Rush Revere in the Presidency, New York Times best-selling author. And so he basically wanted to teach founding principles to the generation coming up. And so Rush Revere, like Paul Revere, Rush Limbaugh, considered to be the greatest radio personality of all time. I know a lot of people don't like him because he's conservative, but, it, but he does try to uh, do some type of Christian thing. You know, he's obviously not apostolic Pentecostal. I'll hear him cuss sometimes, make some lewd references. He's definitely not holiness. But... Uh, you know, he does say some good things about biblical things and all kinds of things like this. So Rush Revere and the presidency. Next we come to 
Wade Horton, the glossolalia phenomenon. This is an excellent book on speaking with tongues. And uh, see, like Charles Kahn is in here. Uh, others, this Cleveland, Tennessee Pathway Press. This is a first edition, 1966. This is a book is affectionately dedicated to Pentecostal pioneers. Of course, Pathway Press is the Church of God publishing house there in the Cleveland, Tennessee area. I was just reading about the battle for Athens, Tennessee in 1946. How it had been taken over by a bunch of local mob bosses and a bunch of uh, World War II vets returning home took it back over for the people. So that was pretty interesting. So this is the glossolalia phenomenon, life related. This is something somebody put in there. I think I may have got that at a goodwill calling on the name of Jesus an apostolic apologetic of the baptismal formula 10th anniversary edition Jason Weatherly this is an excellent book outstanding and he basically went through like at libraries like the hundred leading or hundred plus leading um, study helps and just saw that and, and just really proves that Jesus named baptism is the way to go but you know almost no real scholar doubts that now your your bet your FF Bruce's and your NT Wrights and you know Lars Hartman wrote the definitive book on that Okay, Jesus and the Jewish Roots of the Eucharist. Now, I haven't had a chance to read this one yet. I really want to. I've always had this uh, great almost affinity for certain aspects of Catholic doctrine. Really want to understand it. You know, being raised, and I rather, well, they say I was raised Baptist, which isn't technically a Protestant. Baptists claim they're not Protestants. But, you know, not in the liturgical thing that sometimes I've noticed that certain parts of Catholic doctrine that is so dismissively uh, done by people in my understanding and stuff really have some deep underlying things about it. And so obviously I love Catholic people. I, I, you know, I feel like I can disagree with doctrine and not disagree, be disagreeable with a person. This is the great 1800, 1876, Is God a Trinity by John Miller, a Presbyterian minister, I think he was, who uh, did this. And I think I've done a review on this at some point a long time ago, like Jehovah Jesus by Weeks. They're constantly finding books from the 17th century forward that people had a oneness understanding of God, of which this would be one. Now, some have pointed out that it may not be totally identical to what we believe today. One of my favorite books of all time is Leaves of Gold. You can't beat it for words of wisdom. I mean, just living life in a biblical fashion and the quotes oh my the distillation of knowledge just absolutely fantastic so really can't beat that leaves of gold what else do we have Yep, we have Bart Ehrman misquoting Jesus. He started out as like an assistant with Bruce Metzger, and he took textual criticism to what I consider its logical conclusion, that if God claimed to preserve the Bible and didn't, then what else was God sketchy about? So, Bart Ehrman, University of North Carolina, has these series of books. I try to study his book, study his belief system so I can counteract it. 
because people are getting it. And so I remember back, I have a friend of mine who hates the King James with a visceral passion. He's apostolic. And he used to quote Bart Ehrman. He would probably dispute that, but he did. And when Bart Ehrman turned, I stood, started saying, see, this is where this leads. And so finally, I repudiate Bart Ehrman. It's like, you, know, you should repudiate textual criticism too. The church revival. Just an old book. Now, I get books on revival for several reasons. Sometimes it'll have maybe people speaking with tongues throughout history, on and on and so forth. Things that good apostolics, especially it's like my ministry, what God called me to do, uh, just get into these things. So the Church Revival, it's a book by Baring Gold. My friend, for my friend Steve Mar Walter, Brother Marler gave me this with the author's compliments. Look at that. So the author of this book did this. Is So that was, I can't believe Brother Marler gave me this. Um, first published in 1914. Wow. Thank you, Brother Marler. Everybody should go to his He's O.C. Marler Thoughts Roundup. He's 85. He's doing it. Okay. Selections from the Talmud. A lot of people call it the Talmud. I realize that it's become somewhat uh, avant-garde to talk about all the ways that the Talmud denigrates Christians, Jesus, Mary, on on and so forth. Um, I understand that. But I tend to be able to read it with uh, just fascinated at their thinking processes. And I really like this book. But I've got the Jewish Talmud. I've got the Babylonian Talmud. I think the Mishnah, the Hasfeta, and all this. And, you know, you have to be careful because people get all kinds of anti-Semitic conspiracy theories out of stuff like this. When you just have to say, look, institutional Christianity persecuted the Jews horribly. That's where the term ghettos came from. Said that they were guilty of the killing of Jesus, that it was a continual guilt. Terrible, horrible. Wouldn't let them. The reason they got into money and banking is because so often the church would not allow them to own property and stuff. There was only... And so... Anyhow, stay away from anti-Semitic conspiracy theories. Okay, not by chance. Shattering the Modern Theory of Evolution by Dr. Lee Spetner. So, another, and this is by Judaica Press, believe it or not. So, this is uh, written by a Jewish person saying evolution is incorrect. I'm going to read a couple quick blurbs off the back here. So like Professor E. Simon, Department of Biology, Purdue University, it's certainly the most rational attack on evolution I have ever read. Professor Christian B. Antonson, Nobel Lort, Department of Biology, John Hopkins, extremely thorough and compelling. Uh, Professor Y. Leshen, Department of Life Sciences at Bar Ilan University. Spetner's treatise presents a rarely found multidisciplinary approach manifesting scientific expertise in a widely divergent fields. And Department of the Philosophy of Science, University of North Carolina, Professor G.N. Schlesinger says, written with the utmost clarity, reading it was a pleasure as well as highly instructive. This book could serve as an ideal text to which one might acquaint oneself with the central issues of biology. Not by chance. So, shattering the modern theory of evolution. I may need to keep this out to do a review on separately wish I could okay letters to an American lady by C.S. Lewis so on October 26 1950 C.S. Lewis wrote the first of more than a hundred letters he would send to a woman he had never met but with whom he was to maintain a correspondence for the rest of his life so basically anything C.S. Lewis I tend to get and that's why I have this. Next is a book that made it into one of my top 10 Christian books ever written. This is The Cost of Discipleship by Bonhoeffer, Dietrich Bonhoeffer. And he died. 
fighting Hitler in Germany. And so, what can I say? Insightful observations. Let's see what else we got here. We're coming to a close here. Silver Anniversary Classic, The Pursuit of God by A.W. Tozer. This is another one that made honorable mention. I don't think it made it in the top ten. Incredible book. It'll put you on your face. <laughs> the Holiness of God, Pursuit of God. These are great books. Tozer done reviews on the Tozer Study Bible. Okay, the last two, first of all, is Forensic Fate. A homicide detective makes the case for a more reasonable evidential Christian faith. J. Warner Wallace, author of Cold Case Christianity and God's Crime Scene. So I think he was with the LAPD or something. And so he does, okay, if we were going to investigate Christianity, whether it's true or false, let's do it the way we would do a crime scene. And he says, Christianity is true. Guilty as charged. He's a cold case homicide detective. He's been featured on Dateline, Fox News, and True TV. A former atheist, he's the author of Cold Case Christianity and God's Crime Scene. Wallace has a master's degree in theology, lives in California. David C. Cook, good Sunday school literature. There is what David C. Cook does in the picture Bible. Some other stuff. And The Holiness of God by R.C. Sproul. This is considered a Christian classic. Jerry Bridges, he wrote what, in my opinion, is maybe the very best book on holiness. David Bernard's are great, too. Uh, the Pursuit of Holiness and Practice of Godliness quotes this on the back. John Piper does. John MacArthur does as well. So listen to some John Piper the other day. It was amazing. R.C. Sproul, The Holiness of God, genius. I used to could get on conference calls with him. I have no idea. I think I... Like they were giving away their evangelical study Bible or the Reformation study Bible for like five bucks. And I sent it in and they took it as a contribution, sent me the study Bible, which I've done a review on here. And somehow they'd say, okay, so every Monday you can join a conference call with R.C. Sproul. So that was pretty interesting. God bless. Um, give attendance to reading. The Bible says that. Of the making of books, there is no end. God bless. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.